SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. I'm uh, Joe Schmidt, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Light Lab Imaging uh, here in Westford, Mass, outside of uh, Boston. And our company is, has uh, been in existence about uh, 10 years, and our major mission is to commercialize uh, optical coherence tomography and optical coherence tomography commercialization is, is really the, the forefront at the moment. There's been research in this area for many years. Our company has taken it on, taken on the task to really push it out into the medical community and uh, in all uh, disciplines of medicine, but in particular uh, uh, cardiovascular medicine and cardiovascular medicine uh, uh, in coronary artery imaging. It's unusual that one would think about using laser light or light of any sort for imaging a coronary artery because uh, blood is kind of the nemesis of, 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 of optics and it's, a, it's such a fantastic uh, absorber, such a fantastic scatterer that the penetration through blood is not, is not great. And so one would kind of question the idea of imaging inside of a, a blood vessel which is filled with blood. The early days uh, at uh, at MIT and with Light Lab showed that if you could get an image of an artery, it, this kind of image is rich with information. And it was so compelling, the application, so compelling of seeing the blood vessel from inside with this, with such high resolution, not only on the surface, but below the surface, that uh, people needed to find a way to clear the blood from the blood vessel for a sufficient period to make an image in, in a coronary artery. Light Lab uh, was the first to uh, commercialize uh, OCT using a, a delivery device which involved uh, uh, a, a soft uh, balloon to momentarily stop the blood flow in image proximal to, the, to the, the balloon occlusion. That really allowed people to, for the first time, make images on a wide scale in, in the clinic, in, the, in, in clinical uh, operation. Our company just introduced in, uh, uh, earlier this year in Europe, uh, this Fourier domain technology based on a, a MEMS tunable laser, a very tiny laser that was developed in collaboration with uh, a company, uh, a local company here called Accent Technologies. And uh, this uh, laser engine, this uh, tunable laser, enabled us to image uh, what took uh, about 10 to 20, about 20 seconds uh, previously using the balloon technology, allowed us to do this same image in fact with higher quality in about two to three seconds uh, and it, this two to three second image uh, uh, is completed without the use of a balloon by using a, uh, a, a flushing technique that's very familiar to cardiologists who already do kind of x-ray angiography dye imaging uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the coronary arteries. So this is truly a revolutionary technology that was enabled by, by the laser and we've gone kind of full circle from what was a, co a kind of incoherent uh, or partially coherent uh, uh, light source in the, in the early days to uh, co a coherent, highly coherent monochromatic light source from a, from a laser as the, as the major engine for OCT uh, in, in, uh, in this technology. The idea of using lasers diagnostically really started in the laboratory where people said, well, can we look at biological specimens with uh, fewer reagents? Can we count blood cells, for example? Early uses of lasers was in, in counting blood cells, still, still being used today uh, for, for blood cell counting. Uh, the first, so the first foray kind of into diagnostic use of the laser, in my opinion, was in, in the laboratory. And uh, later the thinking turned toward taking these laboratory procedures, pulling them into, into the clinical domain so that people can use them in real time, in vivo, on patients. And uh, as I mentioned, that was the kind of the early 90s uh, uh, cobble of individuals who, who pushed that, uh, pushed that uh, idea, that, that concept. And SPIE played a big role in that by bringing these, these people together. This last uh, forefront of bringing laboratory medicine into, into clinical practice is one that's going to be played out 
mostly in industry, and, and that's where the forefront is. And uh, uh, there are lots of ideas, there are many papers, there are a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of research that are ready to be commercialized, but it's that connection between industry and the researchers uh, that is still not tight enough. Not, it's still a tenuous relationship. There's still a gap, uh, and in fact, a rather large chasm uh, that, that exists in, the, in that relationship. I think it's now time for uh, industrial researchers and, and, and uh, venture capitalists and uh, funding agencies to uh, translate this this uh, uh, potential into, into, into clinical use. I've always been on the fence between engineering and medicine. I was, uh, I actually got admitted uh, to medical school, but decided at the last moment to continue my, uh, my T PhD program. So I find that biomedical engineering and the kind of interface between medicine and uh, engineering to be a fascinating one. In fact, I don't regret becoming not becoming an MD, but I, I think in many respects it's the, having the, the knowledge of medicine and the knowledge of engineering and being able to work at the interface that makes it most, most exciting and most opportunity for innovation.